All right. Welcome to everyone to Dual Drinks. Uh, we're going to be talking about Antiquated Knighthood. Um, my beer of choice is the most expensive canned beer I ever bought. Um, it's called Sorry, I, I guess. It is um, Sakura Moki, Moki Stout. It's from Japan. It was like $4. But I really want to try it. And then I got a selection of other like Asian beers and then Coors Light if I get to it. But um, So we go ahead and uh, introduce Scory first. Uh, hi, I'm Scory from uh, Green or from Inland Ocean. <laughs> I'm Glenius. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was more to that. Uh, hey, yeah, I'm Gallienus. Talk of all. I um, I'm from Gwak. Greenwood Keep. <laughs> uh, Brynjar. Um, Brynjar. I'm from uh, Blackspire Iron Keep for the Southern uh, Holding. All right. Uh, so I chose a variety of different generations of Empire players to get different perspective on Knighthood because I wanted this to be multi-level. And I tried to do that with all of them, honestly. So the first question that we're going to talk about or ask is... Um, well, I'm going to actually pull it up, sorry. Uh, to the best of your recollection, what was your first thoughts on Knighthood? And it'll start with uh, Scory. Uh, yeah, when I first started the game, uh, which I've been playing for uh, since August of uh, 2019, uh, just a year into it, uh, when I first ran into my first night, it was, uh, I believe it was Sir Dog Boy, and uh, super nice guy, uh, super, you know, active, super energetic on the field, and I love seeing that, and it was like seeing the way he approached the field and everything just you know, push me to that level to want to do better, to want to learn how to fight better. And I feel like that's a great thing to bring to the game and for new people to see. Um, what about you, Glennis? What was your uh, first thoughts? If you can uh, remember. Let's see. <clears throat> that is a unique question. So, um, man, when I first started the game, the first night that I ever saw was Colton, uh, Sir Colton. And, um, it was a very interesting uh, idea for me that knighthood was a thing that you could achieve inside the game. I first joined the game thinking that it was just, you know, a bunch of nerds hitting sticks, but then I realized that there was a caste system, for lack of a better word, um, and a big political uh, scene inside the game. I thought it was very interesting. I mean, my first thoughts were that uh, the knights were somebody that was uh, above all, beyond all, uh, best at best of class, you know, the show horse of the century. And I was super excited because I wanted to become that. I wanted to be something that uh, I could be proud of, that I could see better. And uh, it was it was really cool because I thought, I mean, all, all nights were like Colton, which was clearly not the, uh, not the bar that I should have chosen. But there you go. <laughs> um, Bringer, uh, what, do you have any recollections of when you first started? Wow. Well, wow. so I'm gonna gonna hit the gray immediately, right? See, uh, you remember that far back. Um, so when I first started, I had just uh, left the active military back in 1993, um, and had gotten dragged into it by a friend of mine who was my roommate. Actually, two friends of mine who were both my roommates, um, and that was uh, now Sir Hawk. Don't, 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 don't castrate me now. Don't, don't, okay. Anyway, um, no, and, and, uh, his girlfriend at the time, Lady Blue, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was just, okay, it's something for me to do, um, and the first two nights that I met was Sir Morgan, uh, Kirkpatrick, and Sir Icefire. Um, and they were both new knights, and I had no idea what the knights did, although these two people seemed to be very involved and very much a focal point, and people spoke highly of them. So I was like, well, that's a, a job title, apparently, um, because everything that had to do with anything, they were involved in it. Um, so for me, my first impression of knighthood was that was a title you were given 
um, because you had put in enough work in the organization that you're recognized. So I'm um, got me thinking like, so how have people's expectations from the first um, understanding of knighthood changed over the years or in some cases months of being in the game, if at all? Uh, I noticed from the first time I saw, you know, the first night and like getting all hyped up and being like, that's what I want to be and that's what I want to do. Uh, I've noticed that there's a lot more politics uh, or that revolve around knighthood and a lot more uh, social standards that will be held upon those people that do that. And uh, I, I mean, when I'm questioned about it, I always say the same thing. If if you're going to be a face of the game, which is pretty much what a knight is, you got to uphold yourself to the standard and like do better, you know? How about you, Glynis? Has uh, your opinion perspective changed? Oh, definitely. 100%. So uh, when I first started, clearly uh, I held uh, knights above the bar, uh, if there was a bar. Uh, now it has definitely changed. It has it has become uh, something way different. Um, <clears throat> knights are all different breeds of people, and they're not necessarily judged by their. Uh, they're not, not knights of yore. Definitely not. Uh, they are not. They don't have their own uh, set classes or like a like a like a set of values to go by. Some people make them up. Some people actually follow what they make up. But a lot of the knights just expect the title and expect a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the ego to come with the, the 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 title, you know. They they don't. I mean, I've earned this. This is what I am. Bow before me, kind of thing. Not necessarily those words exactly, but uh, it's definitely. I've seen some of that shit happen, and it's kind of lame. Um, as of right now, I think most knights, or at least the knights that I've seen, uh, with that aren't active every single day on a daily basis, um, kind of suck. <laughs> I'm not necessarily a big fan of knights. Nope. Uh, it's kind of a uh, lost a lot of the flavor that it once had. Disappointing, but understandable in some circumstances. Um, Ron, um, sorry, Brynjar, um, okay. having uh, the breath and experience in the game that we have, and becoming a knight yourself, um, how has it changed for you? Well. So again, um, for, for, for me, I've got a, a uh, I guess I'm going to say unique concept and uh, personal background, as uh, Galenia said, uh, everyone has their own standards that they kind of put forward. Um, for me, being a non-commissioned officer in the military, I quickly learned that you lead by example. You don't you don't earn your position and your title and your ability to be called a leader just because of what you have on your shoulder or what you've been given in a scroll. Um, you have to prove that through your actions. Um, one of my wonderful favorite leadership mantras is no one's a leader until their position is ratified in the hearts and minds of the people they lead. Um, it doesn't matter what you have until you show people that you are a leader that you have their interest in mind that's when you become that leader for me a knighthood is a pillar not not an icon not a altar but a pillar everything sits on their shoulders their mistakes can cause detrimental and catastrophic issues throughout the entire organization um and so taking knighthood means that you have to understand that you are that pillar, that you have to try to mitigate your mistakes as much as possible. And if you make those mistakes, you need to accept them, acknowledge them, and flat out say, hey, um, yeah, I messed up. I'll do better next time. Um, so for me, that's what knighthood has become for me. All right. Work on. Oh, and for anyone that hasn't watched the show before, uh, feel free to ask questions in chat, and we'll try to get to them um, when uh, we can. 
uh, yeah, well, hey, Bane, which is uh show, I'm sure, I think. Yeah, show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot better than the last one. I uh, I didn't know how to mix a drink there. I just kind of went for the alcohol. Yeah, this one's just uh, Dr. Pepper cream soda with uh, Jack Daniels. Pretty simple. <laughs> so, um, that really brings it up to the question, like, what do people expect of Nighthood? What should be expected? Of knighthood, Cheers. in relation to Amp Guard, obviously not any other games right now. <laughs> but um, since we're talking about Amp Guard and knighthood, uh, since uh, not to put Glinius on the spot, but I'm putting Glinius on the spot. Um, so what do you what do you think uh, should be the idea? What should be the expectation expectations for knighthood for your personal kick, perspective? Kick ass. So I've actually thought about this a lot, and I was really disappointed when what I wanted to be a knight was no longer a thing that I wanted. It was like, uh, it was like, man, it was buying a ticket for a train, getting on the train, and then getting like excited for the destination, and and then halfway through the train ride, someone says, "No, that destination actually kind of sucks, man. I'm from there," and you're like, "Choo choo, can't get off the train now, can I?" Anyway, uh. Knighthood, man. Uh, I am, I believe I'm fifth, five five awards in on Garbing. Uh, and I'm very close to being on the watch list, but not there. I actually don't think I deserve to be fifth level, but uh, instead of revoking any kind of the awards, I'm just kind of working towards it. Uh, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I want to be a Serpent Knight. I really do. But I feel like the way that knights are structured right now, it's just not worth it. I, I feel like Knights are a vocation. Knights should be a vocational uh, a thing that you do. You hit masterhood. You've earned that. You are a master of that craft. You are a master garber. You are a master forger. That is incredible. You are astounding. I feel like knighthood should be a self-guided response to what you want to do. If you are a master forger, if you are a master garber, and you're cool with that, and you just, that's it, that's all you want to do, awesome. You sit your ass down, you enjoy your life, because you did great. But if you want to teach people, if you want to be a guiding pillar or a light in the community, and you really want to take it a step further, say, hey, I've decided to become a knight of my craft. I have decided to take this upon my shoulders, this mantle, this responsibility, and I'm going to teach the, the populace what I have learned. I am a role model. And I am going to do the best I can to be the best I can be. And I feel like that's what knighthood should be, a vocational path, not something rewarded. Uh, because then you get people like, uh, I, I don't even know any names, but people that get knighthooded, uh, knighted, and then just fucking book it. Because, hey, I achieved everything I can in this fucking community. Who the fuck needs you, losers? Goodbye. It's just, it's not cool. None of that's fucking cool. I feel like it shouldn't be rewarded. It should be something you choose. That's it. That's my two cents. All right. What do you think, Scory? Uh, I feel a lot of that, of what Galenius just said, because uh, also just thinking about it this past week, thinking about topics and stuff like, like I hear about people all the time that hit their, get their knighthood and then they're like, oh no, but they're on a break. Uh, and I'm like, why don't I see them out on the field? Why don't I see, see them here? Why don't I meet these people that are knights? <laughs> like, uh, and it's, you know, it kind of staggers me a little bit to, to work and do all that, to get that achievement, to just be like, all right, peace, I'm out. Like, it really does put a downer on it. And uh, I think that kind of drives me also to want to work my way up to be that because I want to be better than that. I want to be somebody who sees somebody new come onto the field and be like, hey, come over here, let's fight something. Let's, let's do this and that. And like, I really, really hope that, you know, seeing how people act when they get knighthood from my time on in this game, like, doesn't change my feelings about that. But, I mean, there there's a huge possibility that seeing people walk away once they get knighthood would put that in my brain, that it would just be like, blah, why, why work right. for it? If that's, yes. the, if that's the contingency of everybody just getting it and leaving. <laughs> Choo-choo. Yeah. So, obviously, I have huge differences because I've got, well, I've been a knight since 94-ish. Um, and I've definitely seen everything that you guys are explaining. 
everything you guys are seeing and everything everything it's valid it is so valid that it's sickening um but again for me um like scory said there's there's those few nights like dog boy there's those few nights that actually hold what the knighthood should be and i really feel that the organization amp guard as an organization has made numerous really bad choices in how to structure their knighthoods um i think the first mistake is placing this suggested criteria of masterhood um back when i was knighted um to become a serpent you had to have 10 orders of owl and or dragon yes and or dragon you could have six and four you could have five and five as long as you had 10 that could qualify you for being a knight of the serpent um also at that time however in order to be considered for a knighthood you had to have the approval of a majority of the knights that currently held that belt so you couldn't have nine crown knights knighting approving someone for a serpent belt because that's what the serpents were for now obviously if you didn't have those then you would kind of default to you know every one of your knighthoods um but what we really should be focusing on isn't the awards isn't have they met this criteria this this benchmark but do they hold the personality? Do they hold the moral compass? Do they hold that in which Scory and Glanius are talking about? Are they good freaking people? Uh, in my opinion, I would rather have someone knighted who has two garbers, but is a, a well-known, well-liked, helpful individual that has a moral character that is knightly. That should be a knight. Because we have too many people who go out there and they will do whatever it takes to get their warlord. They will slough. They will cheat. They will do everything. And once they get that warlord, now it's expected that they get knighthood. Once they get that master owl, it's expected they get that knighthood. We got a uh, chat here. Ron, right? Funny how being a knight should symbolize what we have decided knights stand for. Spicy. Yeah. It's it really is. Um, it's <laughs> the problem is is like you guys are saying is you get someone who um, gets their masterhood and they get their knighthood and well they they really didn't care to help the organization they just wanted that benchmark. Sorry, I had to um, interrupt. Thanks for the subscribes. <laughs> Alright. Um. So that's that's what needs to happen. We need to change that. And like Scory said, it's gonna it's gonna have to be from those people who become the newer knights. It's gonna have to be from those people who want to see that change to bring that change to their appropriate circles um, and into the game itself. So I I know I'm really long winded, but I had a lot to say because well I've got a bit of experience. It's all good. We got hours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yep. Ah. Sorry, so many windows. So, kind of going into the we should change how night works and stuff like that, there's a recent change um, to Night of the Crown. And uh, get your thoughts about that system. And I guess also um, how it interchanges with titles given for leadership as well. Since they're kind of a similar path, um, who who'd want to take up that first? Ah, Brynjar. So, whew. Yeah. um, again, back in the, uh, mid nineties, mid late nineties, um, knighthoods. Every knighthood except for crown had two paths. Two award systems. You had the dragon and owl for serpent. 
you had line and rows for flame. Is it line and rows? I, I have, I have no, no idea, man. I believe so. Um, and then you had warrior and griffin for warrior. And again, it wasn't a masterhood thing. It was it was simply having ten orders within those two two paths. Mm. Um, crown has always been one that's been very difficult because even back in those days, for a crown path, it was excellence, and excellence is very it's it's very subjective. Your excellence may be different than mine, um, and there's no real guidelines to it. I think the crown path is a um, is a good method of bringing it into in line with the other paths. But I dislike the fact that you're actually they they decided to determine that crown awards are encouraged to be stacked. Um, and you're actually encouraged to give more than one order the crown for a service. None of the other paths have that. And I think that's going to cause a huge influx of people on that path because they see it as, a, as, as the quick and easy way to get their knighthood. But does that mean that we all have to hydrate? Because all I've got is like a lot of alcohol up here. No. <laughs> it, it's just those just are uh, for me. But you can if you want to. I'm like, I got bubbly water. Does that count? <laughs> You're damn right, Perrier counts. You drink, Lord of Saiyans. <laughs> Thanks for the water idea. It was good. I agree the multiple stack this... is unique. Lord uh, Selenius, man, you are spicy today. Does that not also serve well as getting more E people into office? I'm clearly you met people, but I'm gonna say you're spelling yours <laughs> as well. E people, electronic people into office. Isn't that what we have now, anyway? <laughs> electronic people. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> clearly he meant people. <laughs> I think that that was an actual question for you, Brynjar. Or for all of us, I suppose. Does that not also serve well as getting more people into office? Um, I've never been a fan of simply getting a body in a seat. Um, you need to have someone who's going to do well in that in that job, not just someone who's going to sit there and kick their heels up and gay go. Well, I'm in charge now, so you got to listen to me. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, no, I, I definitely agree with that, yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to find people that are uh, enthused about AmpCard now that AmpCard is kind of cancelled. Uh, I am definitely one of those people that have just kind of set in office because there's no one else to do it, so I might as well. Uh, Got to change that. Got to be a better person. Yeah, I, de I definitely see it across the kingdom right now with uh, like seeing everyone have to beg for somebody to fill an office, and it's to me, that's more so just people like, well, if I take this office and I win this office, like, what am I going to do? What will I do to bring something to this? Do I have time to offer that up every week or every other week? And, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot to think about. WTF? Oh, wait, no. Maybe yeah. what the fit man. I'm going to call you what the fit man. That's great. I like that. Right. When I was talking about giving crowns, it was explained to me that as one crown, if they didn't suck, and then another crown, if you served with excellence. Thoughts on that metric? Um, I can tell you, because I, I looked at this because I was pretty disgusted with the way it was written. Um, <laughs> it actually says that you can't get a crown unless you served with excellence. So it's not just you filled the seat. You actually have to serve with excellence, which again goes back into that, well, what's excellence? Yeah, exactly. Um, I've seen people get um, ducal titles for excellence when they fail to follow the kapora. If you fail to follow the basic foundation of what your job is, how did you do excellence? That's a good question. 
It's difficult to figure it out, honestly. Yeah. Uh, like, if we weren't to say excellence is what we needed to fill, then what would we do? Uh, perhaps maybe a, a majority vote upon the entire kingdom for a kingdom outfit. Hey, did this guy do a good job? Or did this chick do a wonderful, fantastic job? Or is it more like a perhaps the duke or duchess or baron or baroness of each land would say, or vote upon yes or no, whether or not it was like a, a solid rule, you know? Actually, funny how you should mention that. But again, back when I first started, that's actually what happened. If you were nominated for count or countess, um, then all the active counts or countesses would be polled to determine whether they felt you deserved it. And what happened was you had gate guarding. So that, yeah. So then that got thrown away. Gatekeeping. Yes, thank you. Gate guarding, same thing. <laughs> one just same. uses a spear and the other one uses a lock, whatever. Tomato, tomato. That actually brings me to uh, the COK. Um... So if it didn't work back in the day for um, mat or for tiles and stuff, um, and it caused gatekeeping, um, is that an issue with knighthood? Because we have a similar system oh. where we have uh, a circle and we vote on, and we depending on the kingdom, they need the vote or it's just the nicety. Right. Uh, Black Spire, the monarch does not need to have the circle's approval. So right. if a monarch goes, that person's going to be knighted, and the circle doesn't agree. Um, currently, and again, back in back in the day, and I'm going to use that a lot because, well, I'm I've got some past experience back before things changed. Back in the day, the circle was the one that could remove the knighthoods. Um, it wasn't the populace; it was the circle. Um, now it's a populist thing within Black Spire. So someone would have to petition to have that removed um, if they don't felt that feel that person deserved it. Yeah. Um, as far as gatekeeping, there's really not a whole lot of gatekeeping when you look at it from that aspect. Um, and I'll use my own experience. Um, when I was monarch in 2017, there was a person who passed uh, the circle vote. Um, when I looked at the criteria for the knighthood that um, he was being uh, proposed for, the descriptor for um, achieving that knighthood, I didn't feel had been met. And so I, as monarch, told the circle, I'm not going to knight that individual. Um, and then two or three monarchs down the road after me also chose not to knight that individual. So. Um, I mean, just actually, because... that individual declined at that point. Okay, I I, I wasn't sure because I wasn't talking with the individual. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. So gatekeeping can happen. Yes. Uh, I guess it depends on the kingdom's criteria for the ratings. Um, what do you two? You're from Northern Lights. It's a little bit different over there. Um, what do you think about? Um, that our system in your kingdom. I'll let I'll let the Prince of Saiyans go first. Oh, jeez. Unless you want uh, me to go first. Uh, I I would appreciate you going first. Hell yeah, brother. Okay, so I don't give a fuck about the system, to be honest with you, because I feel like it's not worth uh, even pursuing at this point. I earnestly believe that it should be a vocational choice and not something that you have to earn. Because masterhood in itself is ridiculously, ridiculously powerful, in in the award choice and the the, uh, the 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 gate that you have to get through to even get that far. But uh, I mean, if if knighthood ever does become a vocational choice, uh, then it would even become like even more difficult to even just get past. Uh, Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so the uh, <laughs> the the night circle and the way that it's in Black Spire is uh, honestly pretty interesting to hear. Uh, but even if uh, Brynjar was uh, king and the circle said, "Hey, knight this dude," 
And you were like, no, because he doesn't exemplify the traits that I believe to be a knight. That is still GQ. That is still your own brand of excellence. And even if it's uh, common knowledge or common conceptual agreement between the monarchs that have arrived afterwards, it's still your own brand of excellence and your own what should be a knight kind of thing. And it's a difficult prospect because some people really don't agree with that. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of knights that definitely shouldn't be knights or shouldn't have been knighted um, that have been. And uh, that's because they met the bar for somebody's, you know, critical, you know, that person has all the stamps, so they get in. It's um, it's difficult. It's very difficult to judge a system where uh, it's another award, and this award needs to be the fi- the final award, the final thing that you need to do in this game. Does this person deserve it? Have they been good their entire life? Have they committed no sins or atrocities? Have they not murdered people? You know, it's it needs to be an incredible thing that you need a barrier. You know, a barrier that you can't cross unless you have committed no crimes and. Uh, I mean, it still should be that way, but like what I'm saying is it's it's a difficult thing to get past, and uh, it's always going to be that way because the people before you that have gotten those belts are going to think, are you equal to me? Do I do I consider you somebody that can take my place or at least stand beside me without me feeling like I'm disgraced? You know? So it's, it's food for thought. I don't know how the Northern Lights do their night speeding, but I believe it's kind of close to the same as the it's similar to uh, the monarch can't knight without the approval of the uh, circle. Right on. We got some. We got some. Yeah, there are some questions. Savory so, chat. Uh, get. I can't pronounce that. Sorry. Uh, Gua, Gao Gao. Gao Gao. 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 In Gao, y'all's Gao. opinion, should knighthood be something that has to be renewed? This is an interesting <laughs> idea that I've. I have Show was definitely savory. So, uh, hmm. who wants to take that? I mean, I think it's a valid Repeat. thing. What was it? Where is it? I'm sorry. Well, let's see if I can find the exact words again. I scroll down. Oh, uh, should knighthood be something that has to be renewed? So, I'm guessing, like, it has to be reapproved every so often, like maybe a popular vote, or something like that. That's uh, how I envision it. Driver's licenses. Did you know that once you, as far as I know, once you get your driver's license, you only need to take a test, like a really small test, to make sure that you keep it for like eighty years of age. So there are eighty-year-olds on the road right now just driving because they got their driver's license when they were like, I don't know, like fifteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I honestly think that a morality test is not something that someone needs. I feel like if you fail, uh, or if you uh, people think that you should take a morality test. You've already failed the fucking morality test. But uh, it's uh, I don't know. That's a tough one too, honestly. Uh, in the current climate, where you have to earn a knighthood, uh, take would you need to renew a, like your subscription to Knighthood Weekly? Uh, let's think. Man, I think. Not really, no. If you've earned a knighthood and you genuinely deserve the knighthood, then there's no reason for you to uh, resubscribe or uh, whatever. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a, a an office. You don't, you don't have to earn the right again. But uh, the way that it's uh, laid out right now, there's a lot of people that really don't deserve that office. So it's it's a tough one, dude. It's a tough one. So, Clinius, are you saying? Because this is what I've seen uh, from my own peers, is a lot of people sitting on their laurels. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they've, they've, they had this achievement 15 years ago, and they haven't done anything since. They continuously go, well, this is what I did way back when, but they haven't continued to do anything. Um, I think that's what people are trying to address, is those knights, those people who... Once they get it, they're like, eh, okay, I'm good. Um, you mentioned their atrocities. Well, obviously, I think every kingdom has a way of going, oh, you're you're really a, a shitbag, so we're going to remove that. We're going to strip that. Um, so I don't think that's the issue, but the problem is those ones that get it and then just stop. They stop doing every, anything and everything that they've been doing. Yeah. Well, I guess um, that's kind of. What do you? 
That depends on what you think a knight is, I suppose. In the current climate, what is a knight? What 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 is a knight to the people, and what is a knight to a knight? I guess. Right. What what is a knight to you? Like question, honestly, question. What is a knight to you? What do your belts mean? Well, um, for me, so um, I've got uh, three of the four belts. Um, back fifteen years ago, I had earned uh, my warlord, but it did got thrown out to uh, Iraq and the Middle East in 2000. So um, I wasn't around to to earn that. And when I finally did come back, um, I literally told the circle, uh, don't throw that on me because my fighting prowess does not represent that belt. Um, and so I still don't hold it. Um, my knighthoods are very different because again, it was a different climate. Um, I got my serpent because I was pretty much one of the only people in the Pacific Northwest who knew how to do chain mail of any kind. Pretty cool. Um, so it was really cool at the time, but when you look at what I was doing, you might get your eighth owl, maybe. And I got a knighthood for it. Um, there wasn't a lot of people volunteering. The The level of leadership was not quite there. Um, but I got my flame belt for it. Um, my crown belt was for two back-to-back -back reigns as monarch where, quite honestly, I actually, I earned that stuff. Um, <laughs> we actually had a role-play war with, uh, I want to say it was Celestial Kingdoms, where they actually sent up and brought up like 50 or 60-some players, um, including a couple of warlords. Um, they recruited Mystic Seas, which was a kingdom of its own at the time. And we had a big 200 plus person field battle and forest battle. And, you know, it was great. And then afterward, we all went and ransacked Denny's, I think it was, or something like that. Um, but again, it was a different time. Um, my first belting was basically getting jumped. Um, the circle basically grabbed me, pummeled me, and dragged me before the monarch. Um, because again, my initial thought was being a knight meant. You now got to do work. And I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to have fun. And so Hawk told the entire circle once I passed that if they let me know ahead of time, I would run. And so they beat me and dragged me before the, the, the crown. Um, did, did either... I have never had anything that all of our current knights get. Um, you made them yourself. I never, I never received a scroll. Um, my belt, I made myself. I never received a chain. Uh, the two chains I have now are from one of my current squires, Theory. Um, they are the only knightly regalia that I have ever been given by anyone other than myself. Um, so for me, it means a lot to be part of that recognition. Okay. But as a knight, what what do you think your vocational roles are to do? What do you, what do you bring to the community, or at least what oh, do you to, think you should? To mentor. Mentor. Okay. Uh, cool. Awesome. Right. There you go. Okay. <laughs> One word. That's mentor. what I wanted. Yeah. All right. So you believe as a knight, you with your belts should mentor other people. Yes. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I actually believe that too. That's perfect. Beautiful. So uh, what you're saying is the the knights that are sitting upon their laurels, not not mentoring people should uh, go beneath a trial or something to see if they uh, keep their belts? I don't know. Like you said, it's a, it's a difficult choice. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It. I think these are all things, and, and one of the things that is brought up in the Black Spire Circle is, does this person that we're talking about teach people does this person involve themselves um and really i i honestly feel since we're making masterhood a requirement from 99 well pretty much every one of these knighthoods why aren't we making a person have an apprentice part of those requirements as well uh masterhood is great but what does it mean if you have no one you're teaching yeah okay <laughs> We should roll back. I'm sorry, chat is getting pretty uh pretty annoyed that we're yeah, avoiding the Prince of Saiyans here. So going back <laughs> to the previous uh, thing that uh Scory has uh, 
graciously given me the floor for. What was the uh, what was the question again there, Bale? No, I totally spaced. <laughs> no, we were sorry, sorry squirrel topic. Uh, I think it was, right now. I think it was the uh, the topic about the change in the uh, in the crown path. Actually, yes, that, please. That was the original question, so we can start yeah. there. But there are some other questions too. If you so, want to so I pulled it way back for it. <laughs> uh, so honestly, with the uh, crown path changes, uh, with me only being in a year, uh, that had like I haven't really read over it or known the entirety of the crown path. But uh, with that and the talks of gatekeeping and stuff like that, I mean, it's always going to be like, I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, but it's kind of up to me and the rest of the Northern Lights or whoever votes on it, right, to to see it go in the direction that we want, right? Ideally. Ideally. Uh, and, like, these these are, like, the big talks that we should be having with others that play the game is, you know, do you want that gatekeeping option to be there do you like is there a way that we can better this game for all the players that come in new and old i mean uh but i mean yeah I, i'd hate to see it it would uh it would really really turn me away from you know the game if you know somebody i really thought was deserving of knighthood were was told that you know they're they're not deserving of it in our eyes and i'm like well you know that that sucks and i hope it I hope it changes at some point, but let's just keep working to get better. But that could be the same, the same key as you know saying that to somebody and just see the entirety of their drive to get knighthood just fade away. I mean, there's a there's there's a there's a lot of options. I, I feel like with you know the flame and the rose and the serpent and sword and everything. That's those are options for everybody. Like right now, I'm tunnel vision on, on path of the sword. Like I, I love getting out there and swinging stick with people, and uh, just seeing like I've I've made a lot of stuff and I still haven't put any of it up, and I'm like beating myself up over it. But at the same time, I want to go down the sword path. I, that's what I want to do for myself. And uh, if years down the road I reach a point where I say you know, I'm ready to be a knight and I'm ready to actually, you know, push, push, push and get that. And I get turned away. Like, yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a punch in the stomach, you know? So gatekeeping, I feel like could be horrible. Uh, was there another topic I'm missing? Uh, we, no. Uh, I was going to actually It muted into, uh, into what we expect knights to do. Uh, I was actually getting to a point with um, with Brunyar here. Uh, me and him actually have the same view, uh, that knights should definitely mentor people and should focus on it. Uh, but before we get to that, the the chat has desired more questions here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll up a little bit here. Let's see. Locked said, our culture punishes people trying to remove knights for any reason. I totally agree with you. Uh, I think if we had a culture that removal was... Uh, was common things would be better right now we shouldn't hold people accountable we don't hold people as accountable as we should definitely agree but that's not a question uh too many issues at hand house ba -ba 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 -ba. Ba -ba -ba. i'm sure there was a question here uh this is all actually, about square man square they love you oh goodness don't do that i'll start blushing. actually that locked even comment uh brought up uh, another discussion i wanted to have go for it um so should the possibility of being stripped of a knighthood be more of a reality. For example, even when we permanently ban a knight, there seems to be a resistance to stripping them of their knighthood. Should we overcome that taboo? Um, and as Locke Davian pointed out, there is um, a cultural punishment for thinking that you should strip someone and a lot of pullback. But what, are you, what is Scory's opinion on Yeah, Scory, please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, when it comes to to banning and stuff like that uh i definitely believe there are are steps uh say it one more time just so i know the full process of this question what was it okay i'll say it again should the possibility of being stripped of a knighthood be more of a reality for example even when we permanently ban a knight there seems to be resistance to stripping them of their knighthood should we overcome that taboo uh, i i think that it's you know it's absolutely should be a fear to have your knighthood 
taken away. I, I, I mean, you should always push to be a better person and do good things as a knight, uh, in my opinion, that is. Uh, and uh, if I did something that was bad enough for me to get banned from a game and uh then i'd automatically assume that my knighthood and everything that followed my attributes to the game were gone but that's again just my opinion i mean if we follow the common train of logic here saying that knights are supposed to be mentors and to teach the good the populace the good side of amp card what <laughs> what are you doing to get banned that still allows you to be belted i mean come on dude seriously that, that's that's what i was thinking about too it's just like <laughs> that's ridiculous uh i'll take a shot for that i deserve that i'm sorry <laughs> there we go again talking shit about knights well it's the problem i think it more. depends on what uh, this I... band was about I mean, like, <clears throat> what's the softest ban that you could possibly get from Amp Guard that le lasts for like three months? Like, like uh, talking shit about somebody, I suppose. You could hurt someone's feelings, in which case they say that you're creating a hostile environment. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And maybe you are definitely. And I suppose that doesn't mean that your belt should be stripped, but it definitely doesn't mean that you're not going that you're like a that you're a pillar. <laughs> In that regard, at least. I mean, you can be a damn good smith and still call people cocksuckers. Like, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I don't know, dude. That's a tough one. I don't know. Well, to clarify, when I was being banned, I mean, you can't come back to Ampar, period. Oh, permanent suspension. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. okay. Well, then, what's the point of even having the belts? I don't understand. Or the uh, suspension yeah. can be overturned. <laughs> okay, all right. Hypothetically, if I had belts, if I had a belt or multiple belts, and I was suspended permanently for something, there is no way in hell that I want to come back with those belts intact. No one will look at me without spitting in my general direction. I do not deserve those belts. <laughs> Holy shit. No, I would I would much rather re-earn them. Even if I like I would probably strip my rewards myself and then work from ground zero all up again to make sure that I deserve those belts again. And it's not like because of some kind of honor or some bullshit like that or because I'm humble. No, I'm selfish. I'm a piece of shit. I know that. But I also know that to myself, these awards mean everything to me because I've earned them, because I desire them, because I deserve them. Uh so uh I want to feel like I. It's... Oh, no. <laughs> That's it. It's it, it's kind of funny you should mention that because uh, you said uh, earlier I don't remember what it was uh, earlier in the chat or or when we were kind of just BSing beforehand, um, but you you sometimes question your level of uh, your Garber currently. Yep. Um, as far as I know, I'm the only one that actually has turned down Master Garber. Because, much like what you said, I didn't feel I earned it. Um, and honestly, I don't think since since that day, I've actually summoned. I've done a little bit, but nothing spectacular. And I don't know if that's just because I decided, nope, I'm just not going to do it. Or I just got lazy. Probably probably the latter. I probably yeah. think I just got lazy. Because laziness really is a pain in the butt. Um, and of course, now I do bladesmithing and metal forging which is no less of a pain in the butt but it's 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 a new pain in the ass um yeah so should someone be stripped i think it really depends on like you said if it's indefinite if it's an indefinite or permanent ban like like you were saying why <laughs> yeah, why? why do they still have this right um it can get overturned. Okay, great. Come back as a sixth level warrior with no awards. Whatever, you know. Uh, come back and amaze us again with, with your renewed personality, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I definitely believe that people can change, and people do change on a daily basis. But that should also mean that your awards change. You're a new person, new awards. Come on, dog. Earn them. And if you want to come back to the, if you've done something to permanently suspend yourself and you've done something to overturn that suspension somehow without being a piece of shit, 
because there's some people that do that. Uh, then I'll drink, but after this, anyway. Uh, then uh, then come on, come 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 at me with new re renewed vigor. If I see you working from ground zero again, like maybe maybe I'm Duke, maybe I'm Baron at that time. I can see that. I want that to happen. I want you to be a new person. I want you to be the better person. I want more better people in Ampgard, dude. Please, God, there's so many, so many pitfalls in this game, and I don't <laughs> like it. Please. Sent that had a beautiful question. Apparently, oh, and, we're talking about it right now. Yeah, and and like you just said though, is if that person is coming back up, um, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, as far as removing this requirement for a masterhood. If you have someone who's already been a knight and who's shown that their personality has changed, their character has changed, but they're not a masterhood yet, why can't you return their knighthood? Why can't you? you know elevate them why can't you elevate someone who may come into the game with amazing skills that's well beyond what we consider our masterhoods but you know what you have to wait that year or whatever it takes for you to earn your masterhood to become a knight even though you're already a master of your trade um i i i just i really despise the requirement for a masterhood to get a knighthood that's really what it was down to yeah, well, I mean, that's predisposed, uh, what do you call them, opinions of people. Like, hey, it took five years for that person to become a knight, then uh, they, this new person, even though they're better, need to wait at least that long or close to that, you know? Like, we can't just, there's a precedence, you know? But uh, there's also a minimum that should be required. I mean, you can't just come into the game being, uh, like, say, a seamstress or a tailor, and uh, as your main profession, uh, I'm going to just borrow Unum for a quick second. He is an amazing leather worker. I love that guy to death and back. Uh, but if he were to come into the game tomorrow and I would see all of his work and I say, fuck, that's, he's, that dude's already a paragon, dude. That, that is a master right there. Damn, holy shit. Uh, I would still have no doubt that I would never vote him uh, as a knight because uh, he just came to Ampgard. He is not aware of the political climate. He is not aware of what the... Uh, who the players are or how to deal with them or what's going on. There needs to be a base level of intelligence towards what the uh, what the game is and what the climate is and what, who the players are before you can uh, consider yourself somebody that is a knight in this game. Like, in this atmosphere. Even if you have the skill. You know what I mean? No, I, I, I totally agree. When you have monarchs that have been in the game three years, do they're in charge of the kingdom, and they've been in the game <laughs> three years. Now, there are some people that have uh, been in charge of the kingdom for three, uh, with with tenure of three years, that still do a far better job than people that have been in here for like ten years. But I see your point. I definitely no, understand your right. point. <laughs> Those are rare breeds. I definitely agree with you, Kismet. Masterhood is completely different than knighthood. But at the moment right now, there's barely any distinction between the two uh, very, because of the... Very little. A lot of people look at masterhood as simply being that step into knighthood. There's, there's no differentiation. It's like, I'm a man-at-arms, I'm a squire, I'm a master, I'm a knight. And that's a problem. Kimjin's here. I love you, Kimjin. Uh, Guau Guau, you need to teach me how to say your name. What are your that, thoughts on people recommending themselves for awards? That's a little topic. Oh, okay. All right. That's still important. It is a, it is a, it's a good question. I guess uh, I'll rephrase the question so it still get answered, but, um... Come here, bub. Now I'll just go with go the question. What are your thoughts about people recommending themselves for awards? Uh... My thoughts on people recommending themselves for awards. Uh, I love that. Wow, wow, 666. <laughs> uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I just feel like, I don't know, it lacks kind of class to me. Like, I feel like if I do something and someone else offers me up as, hey, you're, you should get an award for this, I'm honored by that. If I put a lot of work into something, yeah, I know I put a lot of work into it and I, crafted that myself but for me to be like i put all this work in here and i should get this 
just I, I feel like I feel bad for that. I feel like that's not how that should go, really. Like, Let me go into a controversial topic really quickly here. Uh, the transition between uh, regular points going into crown points and how it was uh, handled. Uh, I believe Katheria was the queen at the time, and she gave herself a masterhood in crown. Uh, for Northern Lights, at least. And it was a lot of controversial opinion. Should she have done that? Is that legal? Or is that even cool to do? And uh, to be honest with you, if it was, say, a masterhood in anything else, I would definitely agree that that's pretty fucking bullshit. You should not have done that. That's pretty not cool. But the, the crown conversion is something that the uh, the BOD, the, the actual up above the BOD of a kingdom level has requested that would happen, you know? And it was kind of unsavory to see it happen. And I guess this is kind of controversial, but I, I believe that she did definitely do the right thing in that regard. Uh, maybe maybe it would have been cool to just kind of let the, uh, the incoming monarch say, hey, maybe you should have done this for me. But, uh, but I feel like I feel like in, in the way that it was handled, that it was handled kind of tastefully. Uh, it was it was important. It needed to happen. It was a conversion that needed to happen. Uh, that being said, though, uh, any kind of other award that you give yourself is definitely kind of just uh, giving yourself kudos or a pat on the back. Like I deserve this because I did this, and uh, I saw a person do the same thing. And uh, I saw I saw a person make a fantastic belt pouch, and I made the same amount of fantastic belt pouch with the same amount of mistakes and the same amount of perfectionists. Uh, I deserve this award, and uh, it's it's just <laughs> that amount of haughtiness is just incredible to me. Like <laughs> I just feel like if I if I'm sitting there staring at you and this other person, you know, I made the same belt pouch, and you're humble about it, and you're you're not saying a word about it. You're just showing it to people. And then I get approached by somebody who says, I'd like to give myself this award for this belt patch, pouch. I'm definitely going to recognize the one who didn't say anything about it. No, well, that's just, a, right. no. a little off topic from the question. It was, can you recommend yourself, not give yourself the uh, award? Uh, that's the same thing, to be honest with you. Uh, you can give yourself, I mean, the, the question states, can you? Yes, you can. You definitely can. 100%. It, that's the question. The, answer, the question's answered. But the spirit of the question is, is it the right thing to do? And I believe it definitely is not the right thing to do unless uh, circumstances allow it. And that would be... Scory, Scory mentioned... Uh... <laughs> Horror. Come on, man. Uh, the... Uh... Fuck, man, I'm totally off topic now. What was I saying? Uh, circumstances allow it. Scory said, Scory said if I was humble and I didn't say anything about my belt pouch, then uh, then I would get the award, 100%. But at the same time, if I said, hey, I deserve this award, can you help me out? Or, hey, man, I really did fucking good this time. Help me out here, man. This is fucking great. This is worth a six. This is worth a third. Um then then Scory would be hesitant. And I guess that all boils down to a big thing is what do you expect a knight to act like? What do you think an, uh, a knight's common traits should be? Um, humble. Scory thinks the knight should be humble. Uh, Scory thinks the knight should be truthful, honest. And uh, Brynjar thinks that a knight should uh, tutor and should be helpful towards his community, a pillar. Uh, I'm not sure what you think... Uh, Man, I call you Sir Gravy all the time because I think I keep forgetting Balenorn. <laughs> uh, but what do you think, Sir Gravy? What do you think a knight should be? Uh, a teacher, pillar of the community. Uh, I think they should be an example of what people want to achieve in the game. <laughs> so, I mean, those are the things that I think of as my responsibility as being a knight to try to live up to those goals and expectations. Okay, so uh, then that would put another um, dynamic to it. I don't think that you deserve that award because you are not following the code or what I think a knight should be. That's another form of gatekeeping. And uh, that's always going to be a problem as long as gatekeeping is... Uh, <laughs> as long as knighthood, not gatekeeping, as long as knighthood is an award, is something that you have to earn. Uh, that's always going to be an issue. And even if we say that knighthood is a vocational choice and not an actual award, all of everything for knighthood is going to transfer over to masterhood. Even if, I mean, it, it clearly already is, but it's going to be more of a confrontational force. And that's a difficult thing, because human beings suck. On a general basis, human beings are just awful people. 
So I don't necessarily know how to fix that. But I believe um, advocating yourself for an award or uh, saying, hey, I worked really hard on this. I bled. There is blood on this uh, garb. This is this is really hard. I've been working forever for this. Can I, I, I believe that I'm sixth level. Please give me a fair chance. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I definitely believe that a fair chance should be given to you, regardless of what you say. And it's very difficult to get that walker in the middle status. Uh, <laughs> but that's a totally different topic. But yeah, a neutral status. So Kismet said, no issue with self-advocating and recommending to such as officers whether to grant it. That is also my personal opinion. So I'm glad someone else thought that. Ron, you haven't... Sorry, Renyar, you have not weighed in on this topic yet. No. I'm... <clears throat> my opinion on the whole award system is... It deals less with who's recommending and how it's being recommended. Um, I don't really care who recommends an award. Give me quantifiable reasons why the award is, is justified. As Monarch, you would not believe how many Masterhood or Paragons were recommended to me, and the only quantifiable statement was, this person's the epitome of a healer. What's that mean? Do they do they make a significant contribution to the game? Do they know their class inside and out? Do they teach other healers um, when they're on the field? Are they detrimental or or not detrimental? Are they um, beyond uh comprehension supportive of their of give me some some meat and potatoes to what they're doing um a good example would be a um a person going say a paragon um a warrior uh this person taught a class on single sword and in doing so five people from their class um achieved three levels higher in their in their la next tournament than they did previously. You now have what they did, how it affected the people around them, and a quantifiable number as far as how it happened. It's, it's really hard to say that that person earned the award because of bias based on that, because you have quantifiable facts supporting your decision. And far too often we have, and I'm guilty of it as well, people getting awards and we're like why is that happening oh it's because they're friends with so and so whether it be fact or not that's what happens and as leaders it's hard to remove bias it really is um even even when you're talking about a friend who gets recommended for an award and maybe you turn it down um but maybe you shouldn't have, and that shows bias right there. What did you do? Um, so I love the fact that Glenius just sniffed his cat's ass. That's <laughs> she spilt my fuck my 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 drink all over the floor. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> what a hoe! Oh, oh man, get out of here. Get on. Yeah, Get it's, on. After going, it's says, AA intervention. That's what it is. Okay. Um, but no, course. seriously, it's it, – the award system can work, but it really depends on – people really need to look at it in a, in a different different light. I'll be right um, Yes, I think people should be able to um, submit themselves for awards. But again, for me, and again, this is my experience, my experience with the military and everything else, um, if you can't give me quantifiable reasons why that person deserves it, even if it's something you did, I'm not going to award it to you. Yeah. Let's see. It's kind of wanted to wait for Glennis to get back, but I don't know how that's going to be before we move on to another topic. Um, <laughs> but so... How about this? We'll um, go back to a question that is 
Um, a follow-up to the question we were just talking about, what about partners or company mates for recommending awards? I, I strongly support that. Um, especially since AmpGuard is clickish. I'm sorry I had to say that, but we are. Okay? When you look around the battlefield, you have company mates hanging out together. You have mundane friends hanging out together. We are clickish. And sometimes the accomplishments of these people aren't known outside of their small little group. So those people are oftentimes the ones who have to tell everyone else about it. What, what do you think, Scory? Uh, I, I mean, I highly agree. Like, the, if, like, Amgard is clickish. Uh, I kind of, I feel like I myself kind of break a mold with the click thing, though, because I just generally like everybody, and I go around to everybody and talk to everybody I can, uh, especially if something catches my eye, like a shot or a shield that they're using or something. Uh, right, a shot. That shot, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, oh, I, I didn't know I had that power. This is going to be fun. <laughs> uh but uh no if i see something i like I'll, I'll go around to anybody uh i did i mean just recently during the pandemic did i get picked up into a fighter company to be a part of so we haven't done a legitimate meeting or anything so uh will i be hanging out with them at places yeah will i be expecting them to to put me up for an award? Not really, but if they do, I appreciate that. I appreciate anybody who puts me up for an award, but still, if they were to put me up for an award, they would be the ones I'd be working with and ones I would be striving with the most to, you know, show that I'm there and that I'm trying my best to, you know, go down which path I choose. Welcome back, Linus. Uh, so, we're kind of been dancing around this a little bit, and we've I already kind of got some people's uh, opinions on it sorted out, I think. But um, does having knighthood as an award cause a toxic atmosphere? Yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and then we're I, done. I've already, I've already <laughs> taken up. Yeah. I've already spoke about this topic in ridiculous amounts of. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Yes, I agree with. Both. Okay. Um. Other than Glinius, why? <laughs> Glinius answered this one pretty well. <laughs> because because there's such a, a different level of everything. When when you're at a park and you're talking about knighthood, you're gonna have somebody be like, "Yeah, you know, I'm ready to you know work my butt off to become a knight." And you got another person that's like, "Uh, you want to be a knight? Like, what if you end up like this person or that person?" And I'm like, "Why? Why judge my?" path off somebody else's path like and and i feel like that in itself is toxic just because of somebody else's mishaps in the game you know it's kind of toxic to hear somebody else putting down the title of knighthood because of what has happened what about you ron you you answered okay. that, uh, a little explanation behind it maybe uh I guess it's, it's it's probably actually more of a twofold type type answer. Um, knighthood being an award is toxic to those people who already have the knighthood. Um, in the aspect of, they can oftentimes be those people who are just pick one bottle, Glenius, one bottle. One of them is Tennessee honey, the other one's regular Tennessee. I can't <laughs> <laughs> mix them both. With... It'll be fine. All no, right. don't, don't do no? that. No, it's no. just regular. Trust me. I'm, tr so, I'm trusting no. you. Anyway, I'm trusting you. don't trust me. You're right. You shouldn't. What? Um, Go back to the honey? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, so the people who already have their knighthood um, can oftentimes utilize that basically as a power play to create a toxic environment um, because people don't want to offend them. Um, a, a, a great example, and 
I'm just as guilty of this is, you know, um, all of us know that Hawk was banned. Um, many of us have ideas as far as why. Um, but I was one of his good friends, close friends for a long time. And I had people who would complain about his, some of his behavior. And it now sickens me to say this, but my common response was, well, that's just him. You get used to it. <laughs> When is that ever? When should that have? That should never have been the appropriate response. But partially because he was a friend, and another part because he was a knight. That's that's what the response was, and I'm sure most anyone can think of times where something similar to that response was given when someone did something inappropriately, because of their status. Um, so. I think that um, because knighthood's an award, everyone looks at it and goes, well, they put so much time into it. We don't want to endanger that by having it stripped because we're now finding out they're a douchebag. Um, and so we create a toxic environment by allowing them to get away with stuff they shouldn't be. Um, and then the people going on the path to knighthood um, I've seen, witnessed, and approached numerous people, including some fellow peers, about sloughing shots in tournaments because, well, that person shouldn't be able to beat me. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a well-thrown high shoulder shot and the person go, ow, you hit my head. Uh, you're creating a toxic environment because you're chasing that belt. You're becoming an asshole because you're chasing a belt. So, all right. I agree with you. There's so much hydrate going on. Yeah, but it's oh hydrate my God. for Bailman. They're not specifying anybody. They're just saying hydrate. I don't know if that just means Bailman, if that just means everybody, or... Oh, my God. One my, more water my, than beer. My hydration has um, part barley... Um, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna up the cost for that after this. I'm just gonna fish Guys, all the water I have left. Guys and girls, Baylor, that's a fucking cop out right there, buddy. You're gonna have to go get a refill and just keep doing this. I can. Baylor, you're a you're a fucking knight. You're a pillar of okay. the community. I have what? 21 gallons of mead. All right, you start drinking that. I'll be right back. Some water. Hell yeah, yeah, you will. <laughs> I guess I'll be right back. Challenge Talk about knighthood. How many gamer points is that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a Discord view party. I don't know what the fuck that means. Oh, I know exactly what that means. I'll drink to that. I'll be right back. Oh, so please fucking continue bad. the conversation. <laughs> oh, white calls the... are so bad. Dude. Oh, they are bad. Uh, there's especially the lemon. Lemon is terrible. Okay, so if there's any uh. I think I actually ran. I think I one more question I'll get to when I get back. I think I missed. Um, you should be check marking those. I should be, but I've been jumping around. That would have helped. Well, ah. get a dry erase marker and on your monitor, just cross it out as you come to it. Oh, yeah. Please do not dry erase out. your monitor. I will do that now. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> there was a, a statement a little bit ago about Kismet uh, saying that. It was a major reason women don't report about knights and as a woman that that sucks. And I think that's a valid thing to hear and a valid thing I've heard uh, a lot. Like, uh, like I said, I've only been in since August of last year and I hear a lot of stuff about, you know, as a woman, I can't do this or as a woman, it's hard to do this and stuff like that. And yeah. that's, that's a huge direction that I want to, I, I would love to bring to this game is like, like, figuring out a way to, to balance and like it means a lot to the, be able to do such things. A big problem and one of the things that everyone has tried to and especially nowadays I, I've seen last three years at least because um, well I came back only about three years ago I finished my finished my 22 years of service and retired in 2015 so that's kind of when I kind of came back um, but 
it's it's trying to get rid of that old toxic masculine masculinity idea um and it's it's a hard um learned behavior to get rid of um it has taken me it took me probably a good year uh to retrain myself instead of using him and her pronouns to use gender neutral pronouns when I didn't know how they wanted to be addressed. It's, it's, it, it takes a lot. Um, and it's going to be painful. Um, and I think part of what is helping with some of this is the open discussion, um, people being held accountable that we were seeing. Um, and the, uh, uh, what is it? Um, I want to see the non-binary tournaments. Um, non non-male tournaments, I believe, is what it was. Okay, I I I, I like the non-binary concept. Um, well, I mean, if you well, do non-binary, no, I guess you're right. Non-male, right? Okay, exactly. No, yeah, yeah. okay, I, I, I get what you're right. Um, honestly, what I would really like to see, um, so. <sighs> I hope this doesn't blow up anything. Um, I would like to see more cross-culture exchange between AmpGuard and the SCA. Um, so I've been doing the SCA now for about three years. Um, two of my former AmpGuard squires um, are fairly prominent within the local organization. Um, one is apprentice to a master smith who actually made my helm, my heavy helm that I use. Um, and the other um, just last summer stepped down as being prince, which their elections are trial by combat. Um, I ran into numerous people that I knew from AmpGuard back in the day who have been in the SCA. And I've also talked to a lot of people within AmpGuard that came over to AmpGuard from the SCA. Um, so I think both organizations have things that we could learn from each other. And it's kind of interesting that I see um, both organizations going through similar uh, issues that they're trying to deal with. Um, underage minors both organizations went through about the same time frame trying to define and trying to protect the underage minors with waivers and new guidelines um, our uh, amp guards new coc7 uh, relates to that um, the sca knights had a huge blow up because they had someone who questioned the knights and how um, they were interacting with the populace, much like AmpGuard does the same thing. We had a big blow up about that about two years ago. Um, and so it's really interesting for me, because I'm doing both, that I can see a lot of correlations, but neither group is learning from each other. Um, not saying that I want to make one into the other. They both have their own specific... Fuck. That was probably more than what you wanted to drink. Um, ah, I thought it was a mix of Dr. Pepper, but it was just straight fucking whiskey. Holy <laughs> shit. I'm going to be right back, dog. <laughs> I mean, if I was expecting it, it would have been fine, but holy fuck. Right. He's going to go throw up in the wastebasket. He'll bring it back. <laughs> no, I'm going to get more mix. Um, but no, I mean... The, the the way that they do things is different and the way we do things is different and both things are very valid. And it was actually interesting because I was actually um, sat in on a online class that they had as far as chivalry. And one of the things one of their nights down in Southern California brought up was that the SCA made an error when they didn't split up their knighthood. Um, because their knighthood is only heavy fighters. Um, they have other peerages, which deal with much of the same things as our flame knights and serpent knights and and, and such. Um, 
but it just made me think it's like huh because i'd always thought that was a drawback that we have different paths for individual knighthoods and maybe it should be all the same thing um and then to hear from someone from outside the organization from another organization say that what we do is what should have been done from their organization's standpoint um, so the grass is always greener on the other side right um i don't know um again their their award system is very different too so yeah i don't know too much about it myself but i'm going to learn so yeah it's it's interesting um I guess the best way to, to think of it is uh, recognition by geographic location instead of recognition by levels of expertise. Um, so generally you get recognized in your small local group first, and then it expands out from there up to the kingdom level. One so. would argue that's how it's supposed to work here with Bolians giving out your awards and the kingdom giving out your awards. Are we, are we right. Like clicks? right and that yeah. was that was something i tried to reinforce um and encourage um in in my reign was you know the kingdom shouldn't be giving out the first or second awards um unless maybe it's it's for a kingdom event or a a, a you know a kingdom yeah, challenge or something like that those first couple of awards should be by their local um, hierarchy um, and then get pro progressively better from, from there. Um, yeah. A show again with a wordy one. Do you feel the fighting company culture has created a poor quality of knights by stonewalling the process with a give and take? I'll give you your votes, uh, i.e. I'll give you our votes for positive votes and so and so. Um, honestly, I myself being on the circle, um, and I've been told I'm influential, although I fail to see that. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I, I get told a lot that I'm, I'm nothing more than a, uh, what is it? Um, I stir the pot. There we go. I'll, I'll keep it nice and PC. Um, I don't see that. Um, I haven't been approached by anyone with that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not saying that I don't recall or, or I haven't seen it in years years ago, but I don't currently see it. And it might just simply be the quality of knights that now attend the circle, or it might just be that they avoid me because they know that I won't pull for that bullshit. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, my experience since I've been a knight, it's been six years now, in Black Spire, anyways, I have not witnessed that. I know it has happened in the past. Me, I'm just not contacted or people know I won't trade votes so they don't talk to me about it. So I might be just right. unaware of it. You you won't you won't put up with that shit. So they're like, ah, no, he's he's unapproachable. But I know it has not, happened. Not worth our time, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Bill Norton, how does the panel feel Sword Knight reflects on other knighthood paths, being the only knighthood that serves a selfish intent? Hmm. Well, that question implies that you have to be selfish to be a Sword Knight. And I don't know if that's <laughs> necessarily true. <laughs> uh, I've um, heard it said... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and open up to the panel, though, and get their perspectives on it. Um... Uh, this um was Go ahead. Score, you were looking at that path. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, there you go. Hey. That's what I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of jumbling in my mind right now. Like uh oh. so do, do one of y'all have a Galenius, you you started to say something about uh uh how the selfish intent of someone going down the sword path. What uh can how do you interpret that? How 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 am I how would I be selfish by going down that path? You're not uh, I've heard it said through a couple of different people that are actually on the watch list after, you know, like, what is it, after fifth level, uh, mm -hmm. said that you need to, uh, I'm not going to name names, but you need to uh, make sure that you accept every single award given to you, regardless of whether or not you deserve it. 
And uh, if you if you say no, I don't want it, or uh, I don't deserve it, or anything like that, you will be ostracized by the community of knights that uh, prefer sword knights or whatever the fuck. Um, and this is just not one person telling me this. This is multiple people going down the sword path telling me that if you deny a ward, you're not going to get any other awards, or you're not going to get close to what you think you your goal is going to be. And um, I mean that in itself makes me feel like, yeah, all right, that's kind of fucked up. But uh, I'm not a sword knight. I'm not going down that path. I have no idea what the fuck's going on there. Um, all I know is what I've been told. So it's all secondhand, thirdhand okay. information. All right. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, if I, I haven't heard much of that uh, from people, because I guess mo mostly I just want to keep my nose to the grindstone and get better fighting wise. And uh, I hear a lot of opinions from different people about the game. Uh, and mostly I just, you know, I want to get better at swinging the stick. And if a uh, rule changes on how I swing the stick, that's what I pay attention to rather than, you know, what other people are going to try to think the game is or, and what the game actually is. Uh, if I've never had an instance where somebody has been like, oh, you deserve this reward for doing this. And I've been like, oh, no, I don't I don't want that or anything like that. I would kind of take it as like. OK, thank you for for allowing me to have this award and thank you for giving me it to, to me. But I, I don't, I don't really feel selfish if somebody else is, you know, giving that to me. Score you motherfucker. Why do you got to be a paragon of the community? I hate you. Cause I love you. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, sorry. Me, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say, so no, is, um, uh, they specified their, they, uh, more define their question. Uh, Sword Knight is the only path that only benefits you, and the whole point is to be the best and better than everyone else. You do not get a Sword Knight by teaching, fighting, or being a mentor. Um, I like I to say... say I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm stepping on you again. I was just going to say, we talk about you have to mentor and teach on the Night Circle, even for Sword Belts. So that is, that is something that we do look at. Um, but Ron can elaborate. Bren Yor can elaborate. Sorry, right. Keep so, name. Uh, I think I understand what Lord Selenius is asking. Um, so, in order to achieve your sword knight, you essentially it's it's just about being the best you can in attorney because that's the the only real benchmark to get your warlord. Um, whereas, especially with like flame knight, um, you are working with other people you're helping the community it's not really focused on just how well you are doing individually um and i want to guess that that was what he was he was trying to get at um however again this kind of goes back to that whole self-serving toxic behavior concept um if someone has knightly virtues, and I say they they are a, a knightly virtues, and I'm talking about they're looking out for the people around them, they're looking out for their kingdom, they're they're not self-serving in what their goals are. Um even while they're on that path through their attorneys and their wins, I would hope that they would be helping and teaching people as they learn. Um, so in that aspect, it's not self-serving. Um, I hope that kind of answers his question. Um, yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah. I guess this point is, that. um, you can only for sword. You have the option for every other path. I guess is what they're getting at. So hopefully we uh, covered that topic well enough for you. Uh, someone else brought up uh, the Battle Knight concept. Um, for people Battle Knight. The person, or in case you're unaware, it's been a topic that we had uh, some kind of knighthood for playing the actual game and playing the battle games and stuff like that. Um, it went to the CUM. Mm -hmm. There was a discussion. Uh, they did not make any determination about the qualifications for such a knighthood, but there's going to be ongoing talks. So what are people's opinions on having a knighthood specifically for playing the battle game aspect of Amp Guard? 
Scory, are we what talking? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe this is the uh, this is the topic I was talking about earlier, right? The uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah. The battle games. Uh, so uh, I was actually just talking to a really good friend of mine recently. Uh, he he goes back and forth between Ampgard and Bell. Uh, uh, he's really great guy, really genuine. And we were talking about it, and he said, "You know, the the battle game idea is a great is is a great idea, and it really shows from the style of fighting I've seen him do with like on a ditch line, the way he can you know cut behind everybody and just disappear in an instant and reappear behind everybody, just taking them out." Uh, <laughs> the knee. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm like, <laughs> you are astounding at this. You're you're objective driven, and you get the job done quick and efficient. You know. And you back it up with some great fighting skills. So, like, both options of the sword and through battle games would be great for him. Uh, my thoughts on it otherwise or I mean, uh, I, I think it would give people a reason to push towards, you know, learning everything about their classes, learning everything about their battle games, creating battle games, doing, you know, great stuff in order to bring more to the game and another avenue for some people who just enjoy playing battle games, but not so much training up with a stick or otherwise. What do you think, Linus? I'm glad you asked, Sir Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to keep it short this time. I don't know if I uh, that, this. that depends oh. on what you consider Amp card to be. Uh, do you consider Amp card to be a coalition of different things between garbing and fighting? Do you consider it to be a ditch line and your excuse for beating nerds over the face? <laughs> Fantastic idea. Or do you consider it a um, a coalition of different strategy games that you can find or uh, uh, have some sort of experience with? Uh, 5v5 tournaments. Do you consider it to be um, red versus blue kind of team tactics? Do you consider it to be capture the flag or et cetera, et cetera? Battle games. Battle games are a huge idea. It, it sounds like a profound concept, honest to God, because the, the battle games that I've played are genuinely pretty shit. Uh, the ones that I uh, have uh, really enjoyed were <laughs> so fantastic that I, I feel like I can, I can play them constantly. Um, and that's getting a little bit off topic, so I'm going to get back on topic here. Uh, I believe that Ampgard is, a, is, is genuinely playing the game, which is to say playing are using as much as the rule book as you possibly can in a in a in a singular instance which would be uh, battle games which would be motherfucking battle games i love battle games i am so passionate about the the uh, synergy and the strategy between different classes and the uh, the rules between what can happen and what can't happen and uh, the different gray areas that people keep finding out of nowhere that, that seem yeah, all right, that exists. You can do that, but if you do that, you're a piece of shit. You know? You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So, so battle games. Battle games are amp card. That's what I believe. I solely believe that. And you can't have battle games if you can't play the class. And if you can't, you can't play the class if you don't have garb. So, garbing, crafting, and creating things for people is an incredible thing and re is required in amp card. It's it's a part of amp card as well. You have a question? Um, I, I I would disagree with one. Well, yeah, disagree with one 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 particular statement. Uh, you can play a class as long as you have a sash. That's, That's actually not true. Uh, so you can't yeah. play the class unless you have a minimal amount of garb. That garb needs to be either. Uh, it, it depends on whoever is your your champion at the time. But in the rulebook, it says that you must have a tabard or tunic and a sash. You are required to. Otherwise, you have to play peasant. It's 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 the law of the book. Obviously, no one plays that because gatekeeping the actual game is the worst play in the in the history of plays that have any kind of retention. Right. But uh, as a uh, regent in my keep, I have uh, created a couple of different tabards for people to borrow for the game, for new players. And players that have played the game for three to four months should honestly have a tabard by then. And if not, I would gift them a tabard if they don't have money or if they're just not enthused with it, you know? Because I, I want retention. 
and I'm good enough at who I am to be uh, throwing fucking garb away. If it's like five bucks and like an hour of my time. I, I I honestly appreciate and and love that. It's it's one thing that I've seen people try to start up and it never really took hold. Um, and that was like you said, you have some weapons that are legal and checked monthly or whatever the case may be. Um, and then you have garb that can be given to newcomers. Um, and again, I could, I could go back and forth and do all kinds of great ideas that I've gotten from cross gaming, but that's a different time. Um, yeah. Uh, I keep ranting. I'm sorry. So long story short, uh, it's important to garb yourself. And I believe that Emperor is basically just battle games. So having a battle game uh, night would be fantastic. But I also don't believe that it needs to be an entire separate fucking knighthood dedicated to battle gaming. It should be something that Flame should become a part of. And there should be a different amount of sex of sex. So uh, I, I don't know how to say that while I'm drunk. I'm sorry. Uh, while uh, <laughs> Uh, a flame nights, you know, dedicated to feast, dedicated to gaming, dedicated to other things, you know. Um, that's two cents, you know. Just like there's are, different are, flavors of garbs. Are you saying flame nights, as in like, oh, uh, maybe like serpent nights, who have their particular foci? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you can't yeah. go to like a serpent night and be like, hey, teach me chainmail, and they're like, uh, I only do, I do like that. cloth. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm also known as the the flaming rabid squirrel. I know pretty much most any crafting. Okay, well you're a unique person that no one can <laughs> become. Or well, at least... I've, I've got I've got ADHD and have no kind of self control. That's really what it is. So, are there any other uh, knight related uh, questions? Knighthood or <laughs> related questions? Um, Yeah, Brynjar has been in the game forever. Yeah, pretty. it feels like it sometimes. Although I did take a 15-year break, so yeah. that hey, that time frame is really it's skewed. A little skewed. Yeah. Kismet said, at least then the knights might play their ex exclusive classes. I, I don't know what the fuck the conflict, uh, like the, 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 uh, the actual reason why she said that but it brings up an extra and an excellent point do we believe that uh a knight should paladin. continue having paladin and anti-paladin s classes oh yeah that's a good question and think about classes uh nor yeah. did i but now i'm drunk you know, years ago back when swords were swords um no uh it used to be if you had a paragon class you <laughs> had extra benefits um, now, if you understand, this is back when um, you had limited lives in a battle game. So a warrior might have 12 lives where a healer had six. <laughs> um, which, again, at the time made sense in the game system. Because the game system at the time, you didn't have 50 million healers out there. But you had a whole bunch of foot slogging warriors. Um, so it kind of made sense. Um, even in our in our fantasy games, you don't have a shield wall of wizards. Um, so if someone kills five or six of your shieldmen, it didn't matter. You had 12 more in the wing. If someone killed your wizard, you only had two of those. So it, it made sense in the gameplay aspect. Um, things got changed, and I can only hy hypothesize something about well, the healers got targeted and were shattered, and so they sat on the sidelines for half an hour while the game blazed on. True. That sometimes happened. Although usually if one side had all their healers destroyed, the game pretty much came to a quick end shortly after because you had no way to resurrect anyone. Um, yeah, so Paragons, or, or Master of the Classes, had benefits. Um, Yo, what the fuck is that in your hand? What is that? Let me see it's that. A, it's, it's Let me a see that. Oh. It's a knife. 
I fucking love it's a, that. It's a dagger scissors. That's like a punji <laughs> stick for like. This was made by uh, Rono of Blades Edge. Great guy. Amazing Rono. work. Yes. Oh, that looks sexy. I like it. Yeah. Anyway, questions in chat. Let's see. I'm 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 sober enough to read properly. Let's so let's take the a questions look here. have been centered around color classes and masterhood, which isn't really a topic for tonight. No. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. That that seems flavored in knighthood really quick. Should should color be a knighthood? I mean, flame or serpent covers all that for what people consider color. In my opinion, for being a LARP, there's a whole lot of lack of roleplay off the battlefield. Have you seen roleplay in Battlefield? I feel like that's rare too. No, I, I haven't Moses. seen that in a long time either. But <laughs> you know, you know uh, here, Moses. I've seen People I've watch. seen Shaden like dramatically die a couple of times inside yeah. fucking combat. That was pretty funny. I've seen Moses pretending he's an actual farmer farming like ping pong <laughs> balls. Right. That's great. But generally speaking, no. At levels, huh? Ooh. Okay. Only, I've only seen it in like quest games. Like I have looked for a little bit of uh role play out on the battlefield and stuff, and most of the time it's just like, Oh, <laughs> you got me dead. Yeah. And I'm we, like, All right, cool. Uh, our game's pretty much evolved into League of Legends. Her? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It, again, back in the day, role play was was pretty huge. You would have battle games that would evolve into quest lines. Um, people would um, hold allegiances and tr turn turn tail on people because of those allegiances uh, in battle games. Um, people would call out favors or debts owed, and you know, so there was this huge concept but you also have to understand that at the time people had different personas depending on what class they played so hey, nobody again, it, was a, for that. it was a different time different era different different game system yeah my concern with uh the color class being a knighthood is that classes don't get knighthood they get paragon and, and that's where that is um so if we're talking about class structure i mean color would go to a paragon path not a knighthood path yeah and and generally color is someone who helps create the atmosphere um so that would kind of fit into that owl dragon category uh yeah. flame you know, it kind of fits into everything except for sword. Now, most most of the colors that I've seen have kind of been somebody that haven't necessarily played the game, or at least don't play the game often enough to consider themselves an enthusiast of a certain class. Uh, people that uh, bring or bake cookies and uh, bring forth a level of camaraderie outside the game, outside the field, you know? And colors are awesome, 100%. I agree. Um but it's difficult to think about a Paragon class for a color, aside from something that's just for um, making somebody happy. It's it's difficult. That's something that is something that is very difficult to judge upon. I suppose yeah. if someone says you're a Paragon, it's like it's like World of Warcraft Archmage. If you can say that you're an Archmage in World of Warcraft or something, and no one says anything otherwise, then you're a fucking Archmage. That's just how it is. That's that's it. I could say I'm a Paragon Color, and if no one says otherwise, then motherfucker, I'm a Paragon Color. Suck it. I can't believe I just drank White Claw of my own free will. Sweet mother <laughs> of God. Oh, I'm sorry. So, oh. uh, are there any other uh, night questions? Or night hook questions? No, I will probably start to wrap it up. It's been about two hours. Oh, some um, people have actually been awarded Paragon Color. That's interesting. Yeah, it's it's not common, but it happens. Cool. Um, so, uh, final thoughts. Does anyone want to give out their final thoughts for the night? Um, everyone will have a chance if they want. Uh, 
Renyar? So if you want, we'll go reverse order. Well, go reverse order. Go oldest first, huh? Yeah. So I appreciated this. I appreciated hearing um, the thoughts and, and input from uh, people who have been in the more recent cultural um, aspect of Vamp Guard as far as how, how it pertains to knighthood. Um, it's definitely uh, confirms and solidifies a lot of my thoughts and my own observations. Um, I do hope that eventually the organization overcomes some of these big hurdles. Some of them, I think, are self-placed, um, which, again, is, is stupid, in my opinion. Um, oh, someone might move too fast. Let's put this hurdle in their way. Uh, how is that helping? Oh, that's a knee-jerk reaction because you don't want that person to become knighted too fast. Um, too many people want to look at either nitpicking. Um, well, it says that I can become a knight. If I do this, I've done that, so I should become a knight. Um, and then you have other people who are doing the same thing that says, well, it says I should do this, but it doesn't say I have to do it. So you should do, you should give me a night. Um, people need to, to understand what that role means and that it's not, um, as Galenius says, it's, it's, it's not a simple award. It shouldn't be looked at as an award. It should be looked at as a job and duty and responsibility for the organization. All right. Uh, Glennis, did you have any uh, final thoughts you wanted to throw out there? Hell yeah, I do, Gravy Knight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've already made it clear that uh, Knight should be a vocational something that you consider and decide on your own terms. And I believe wholeheartedly that that's just something that should be commonplace. Um, creating a race, a rat race, to get to knighthood is only causing more distraught and honestly terrible nights. If we make it a vocational service where people can just, you know, decide that they're going to be a knight and actually commit to it, then that's something that could benefit the entire community. And there are people that get awards that really don't care about awards. Honest to God. Uh, like, uh, there are people that get, like, fighter awards or warrior awards that don't give a shit about the fighter path. And you could, I don't know how, but you could probably get up to like nine or ten even with a warrior path with not even giving a shit about awards. And uh, that's pretty cool. Honestly, that is pretty cool. But if you become a knight, if someone decides, hey, I want to knight you for something that you don't really give a fuck about, that's, that's kind of necessary. That's kind of ridiculous, you know? Like, you don't even want the knighthood. And you're going to leave the game, or you're going to decide you don't give a fuck about that knighthood. And people are going to expect things of you. Expect things that you don't want to do. You just want to enjoy the game. Why should you be forced to uh, teach people? You don't care about people. You hate people. You just want to play the game. So uh, it's important. It's important to be a choice. You know, Having duty thrust upon you is the worst thing in the world. It should be something that you choose yourself. Uh, so a masterhood is something that you should earn. A knighthood is something that you should choose. And that's it. It's a good sound bite. Um, what about uh, you, Corey? Yeah, I think my uh, first of all, you know, thank you for having me come on here and stuff, and uh, and sit and talk with you. I was good, like hearing from all levels on all different to all the topics of knighthood and stuff. Because uh, being being extremely new to the game, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know, and I love hearing about stuff that I don't know because then I know about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I I was I love the fact of you know where knighthood come from and and what it's doing. I just want to you know stand by my fact of I want to see better. I want to see you know if you are a knight uh, or going you're becoming a knight and stuff. I want to see the the hype on the field. I want to see the I want to be that guy. I want to be this person because I want to be whoever you know is walking around with the title of night because that's what gets me hyped. That's what, you know, 
I see I see people enter the field and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to go over there because I really want to fight against this dude because, you know, it'll tell me who I am as a fighter versus who they are as, as their knight. And, uh, and as well as, you know, pushing towards ever becoming, quote unquote, the, the good knight out on the field, uh, whether that's your persona or not, uh, you should definitely bring that good energy out there for everybody to see. Cool. I'd like to have a new wall on tonight. I'd like to thank everyone for participating in the chat. It was a very lively chat tonight. I'd like to thank Loctavian for subscribing and for the people that followed me. Uh, next, uh, Dougal Drinks will be in a month. I'm not sure the topic. It's either going to be Paragons, where we've been talking about doing an Amp Guard SCA uh, award comparison kind of chat. So I don't know if that'll be next month or the month after, but we're looking into that. So it'll be one of those two next month. Um, and I will see everyone next month. Thank you.